Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about um, etching. And so uh, a lot of you will be working on etch, etch recipes over the summer or uh, using them to create your different patterns and features. Um, and if you've done the photolithography lab, you've already done some wet etching. So after we, we exposed the photoresist and developed it, then we actually etched away all of the exposed areas. You, um, so we've done wet etching already. And so today we're gonna to be talking about wet etching and dry etching. And so at the end of this lecture, you should know the differences between wet and dry etching, what it means for a recipe to be isotropic or anisotropic, and what the different wet etching mechanisms and dry etching mechanisms are. So first I'm going to talk about some of the main issues with etching and some of the obstacles we're trying to combat. So you've all already learned about the imprint lithography process. And so when we do imprint lithography, one of the main issues we have in maintaining image fidelity is actually with the etch step. So here I have an example of an eight-pointed star we're hoping to be able to make. And um, after we stamp the polymer and cure it, and do the breakthrough etch, and then, uh, and then etch through the remaining substrate material, you can see that the sidewall angle of this feature is increasing. Um, we actually have corner rounding here, so these tips actually don't look that sharp in reality. Um, and a lot of times the lateral and um, vertical height of our feature is smaller than what we want it to be. And so our goal is at this center is to actually develop better edge recipes and figure out how to make these shapes with um, really high uh, image fidelity, so a lot of sharpness, right angles, and, um, uh, and try and make them as uh, close to the template image as possible. So some of the problems that we see with etching at the nano scale is like, so here I have uh, a feature that we're trying to etch through. And so when we're trying to create an edge recipe, what we hope is to get this. But a lot of times it's difficult to tell when to stop an etch recipe, so you'll get an incomplete etch feature, or maybe you'll get undercutting depending on the chemical reactions happening, or if the etch recipe is isotropic or anisotropic. And so first I'll talk about plasma etching, or sometimes it's called dry etching. So in plasma etching, plasma is an ionized gas, and uh, power source is used to generate a reactive species inside the plasma, and these species usually, usually diffuse to the surface of the material, and they adsorb to the surface of whatever you're trying to etch, and a chemical reaction occurs, and the byproducts desorb from the surface and diffuse from the gas. So this is an example of how plasma etching is used to uh, chemically remove materials. Plasma can also be used to physically remove materials. So sometimes we can use um, radicals and ions and fire them to, at the material, kind of like uh, bullets, at the surface of the material, and we can physically remove uh, the substrate. And so some match recipes actually combine chemical reactions and like these physical reactions to get higher etch rates or high etch rates and high selectivity. And so this is an example of what a plasma reactor looks like. So here we have our power source, the gas is fed in, and we have two electrodes. And so um, here is where all the ionized gas is, and we have radicals and ions. And um, above the surface of the wafer is a sheath where all of the ions are accelerated toward the surface that we're trying to etch. And so this is uh, basically what's happening when you see these plasma reactors in the clean room. And so when we have these dry edge mechanisms, these are um, some of the different things that can happen. So you can have an incoming, um, you can have an incoming neutral ion, and so it will come and it will hit the surface, and it can either absorb to the surface, or it can actually diffuse, so it can move, and or it can ref or it can reflect and bounce off and. Uh, from this what's called like a shadowing effect. And so when predicting how an etch recipe will react, it's, it's actually really difficult because we're trying to predict the behavior of all these incoming ions and neutrals and they can um, do have all these different behaviors depending on what chemical species it is and what you're trying to etch. And so for wet etching, in wet etching we basically have a chemical bath and we immerse whatever material we're trying to put, uh, trying to etch in the chemical bath and um, what we um, usually have is uh, the reactant will diffuse through the surface of the material, a reaction will take place, and there's the products will um, leave. So those are the three governing mechanisms. And so both wet etching and dry etching have pros and cons. So because wet etching is primarily chemical, it's highly selective. So selective me selectivity means that if we're trying to etch one material and not the other, so like in our photolithography lab, we're trying to etch away the exposed resist and not the unexposed resist material, 
um, and it's highly selective. So we get what we so it's very selective to the exposed resist material. Um, and wet etching doesn't cause much damage to the substrate, and it's more inexpensive because it doesn't require a power source or a big plasma chamber. Dry etching is really easy to start and stop. It's less sensitive to changes in temperature, and it's easier to get really anisotropic features. So I'll talk about uh, next what, uh, that, what that actually means, what anisotropy means. Um, dry etching is generally more repeatable, and because it's usually done at more lower pressures, there's fewer particles in the environment. So it's a, it's a much more controlled environment than wet etching. So when we talk about isotropic versus anisotropic features, isotropic basically means we're etching in all directions uniformly. So when we etch, have an isotropic etch recipe, um, you'll usually get these circular shapes because in a circle, the radius starting from the center is equal all around. In an anisotropic etch recipe, you'll, you etch in one direction preferentially. And so in an anisotropic recipe, you can get these really high aspect ratio features. All right, so that concludes our etch lecture. So don't forget to go over your review questions. And if you have any questions about anisotropy or um, selectivity, or if you want more details about the differences between wet etching and dry etching or how the plasma reactors work, bring them to class and we'll discuss it.